Hello everyone, I'm JG, welcome back to Music Forever, where today I'm going to be reviewing Mastodon's second and critically acclaimed classic album, Leviathan. Now before we start this review, I just want to say, for those of you unaware, I'm actually reviewing all of Mastodon's albums this month leading up to the release of their album Emperor of Sand at the end of the month. Uh, I'm calling it Mastodon Madness, you know, like March Madness. It's funny. It's supposed to be funny. But yeah, uh, so stay with the channel if you want to see the rest of those. I already have a review of Remission out there, and the rest of the album should be coming soon. Mastodon are one of my favorite metal bands. They're a sludge progressive metal band that uh, have gained a lot of acclaim over the past few years in the whole metal scene, just the music scene in general. And this album here, Leviathan, is a good reason, a uh, big reason why they did so. Now, before this album, Remission, their first album, was successful and was a good album, as I said in the review. But this album is kind of the album that propelled them into stardom, I guess you could say, about as big as a star you can get in the whole metal world. But yeah, with good reason, this is a phenomenal album. Following with the elemental theme that was started with Remission and that album being Fire, uh, Leviathan is Water. And the concept of this album is based on the novel Moby Dick. Uh, of course, that kind of connects back to the whole water theme easily, of course, because, you know, the book's about a whale and the whales live in the ocean, and the ocean is filled with water. It makes sense. Now I just want to say as a disclaimer, I've never read Moby Dick, however it's one of those novels that I think everyone just kind of knows the general plot to, either just because it's a big uh, piece of pop culture and everyone just kind of knows it. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, maybe I'm just the only one that happens to know Moby Dick kind of without ever having read it. I don't know. Either way, uh, sit down and get comfortable because today we're going to be reviewing this whale of an album here. This video is just going to be a bunch of whale puns, isn't it? Sonically speaking, uh, Leviathan continues off where Remission left off, in my opinion, adding a bit more of the progressive elements, uh, maybe more melodic elements, that were kind of seen on Remissions in parts, but here, they're expanded upon more. And this is the first album where we're really kind of seeing clean vocals kind of uh, taking their place. On tracks like Sea Beast and Naked Burn and Parts Alive, you see some of the clean vocals coming through. They're still the minority compared to the rougher vocals, but they are there and present. Another aspect of this album that I just find great is the riffs. Now, the riffs on this album kind of go in two different ways for me. There's the more aggressive leaning lit riffs that sound very paranoid and urgent, and then there's the more melodic kind of sounding guitar parts that sound really mysterious to me. And I really like how these two are kind of put together, because I think they kind of play off each other really well. You know, the paranoid, aggressive kind of riffs, uh, riffs just kind of sound like you're out in the ocean, you're just a monster just kind of chasing after you. And then the more mysterious kind of riffs sound like you're standing on a big ship out in the middle of the ocean in the middle of a thunderstorm, just kind of looking off into the ocean, just amongst all the darkness of the clouds and everything, and like you're looking out for a monster at sea. That's just kind of what I picture when I hear some of these riffs. It must be the concept of the album going along with it. I just think the two go hand in hand. Now the band members are firing on all cylinders here. The drumming is phenomenal, the guitar riffs, as I said before, phenomenal, the bass work is phenomenal, the vocals, of course you have those more rough style vocals and the clean vocals, overall just showing a wide array of just vocal skills overall. And I really do like how the tracks on this album kind of flow into each other. Now they don't actually flow into each other like some albums do, however the riffs have a similar sort of style, and not in a bad way that they sound generic and kind of like, you know, samey. It's more like they were made in a similar style, of course, maybe that's that more paranoid, urgent style, or maybe it's that more mysterious style I was talking about before, but you get a similar feel from these songs. Like, I don't feel that these songs would make sense on any other Mastodon album, or even though that some of their other albums may sound like a Leviathan in terms of the sound and heaviness at times. If you were to take any song from this album and put it on remission, I don't think it would make any sense. These tracks clearly all belong together, and I think that's a sign of a good concept album. Now the first track on this album, Blood and Thunder, is a perfect example, and I think it really starts off this album, well, it's a perfect example of this album overall, I guess you could say. Kind of like Crush and Destroyer, how that was for remission. I really feel that Blood and Thunder is a perfect example of what's in store on Leviathan. The riff on this track is just monstrous. I like how it kind of starts off with just the one guitar and then the rest of just kind of kicks in. Really cool in my opinion. The lyrics of Blood and Thunder are also somewhat paranoid, with the opening track lyrics being, I think that someone is trying to kill me. Of course, that's very paranoid just right off the bat. Also, this track 
features Neil Fallon of the band Clutch doing guest vocals at one point, and he also provides a kind of rough sounding vocals that are different from Mastodon's vocalist vocals, however, they are recognizable and they kind of flow together with this track and everything that's very Mastodon-y about this track. They flow together very nicely. The two go hand in hand very well in my opinion. This track also has the coolest chorus on the album, what is their screaming white whale, holy grail. I know that sounds stupid saying that aloud, but in the context of the album, believe me, it's the coolest thing ever. The third track on this album, Sea Beast, as I mentioned earlier, is the first track where we really kind of see the clean vocals coming through, and I think that the clean vocals here make a really kind of catchy sounding song. I just really like the way that the beginning of the song has this kind of mysterious feel to it. As I was saying before, the guitars have this mysterious kind of tone to them before launching into this heavier sounding sound with of the singing over it. I just think it's a really cool kind of concept. And if you thought Mastodon were going to go soft on you for the rest of the album, think again with the next track, Island, which is just a really aggressive sounding track. Just right off the bat, it starts off with this really heavy kind of fuzzy sound before the riff kind of becomes a bit more clear and then the vocals just come in screaming. And also apparently the song Island is in the movie Monsters University, like the Pixar movie, you know the cartoon with like the monsters that go to college. Like, apparently it's in that movie, I don't know if that's true or not, that says that on Wikipedia. I haven't watched that movie in years, so maybe I'll have to go and check that out. But that's a really peculiar song to have in a children's movie in my opinion. Not that it's like inappropriate or anything, it's just kind of aggressive, don't you think? It might scare some kids. I mean, if I heard the opening of that song when I was a child, I would probably be very scared. The track Iron Tusk displays those more paranoid sounding riffs, especially the more urgent sounding part that kind of towards the end of the track. I feel like towards the end of this song, it just becomes very urgent and kind of, you know, I guess you could say, I know I've been saying this word a lot throughout this review, but paranoid. I just realized I've been saying the word paranoid a lot and I'm wearing a Black Sabbath shirt. I swear that's not even intentional. Now the track Megalodon has one of the weirdest moments on the album. I really don't know how to describe it, but there's this one guitar part that just kind of starts off sounding like it's going to switch up and then it goes into this kind of quick little solo thing before launching again into this heavy riff that kind of continues throughout the rest of the song. I don't know, it's just kind of weird, but in the best kind of way I guess you could say. It's just really weird sounding, but I don't, I don't even know. I just love it though. It's not a bad thing. It's just strange, but I love it. Now, one of the highlights on this album, in my opinion, is the track Aqua Dementia that features Scott Kelly of Neurosis, who has appeared on every Mastodon album since and including Leviathan. This album was kind of the one that started that whole tradition, I guess you may want to call it, where he appears on the one track per album from them. It's really cool. I love how Mastodon like to play around with vocals, not only within their own band, how they have... On this album, they have two lead vocalists, but eventually they would go to have a third lead vocalist. Uh, but just having lots of guest vocal features. On this album, they have two, and then later albums, they would have... Uh, more sometimes, sometimes it's less, but Scott Kelly has always been there since his album. In this track, he just really has these really aggressive sounding vocals, probably some of the most aggressive on the entire album, and it's definitely one of the highlights for that reason. I just love the aggressive sound. Now the next track I want to talk about is my favorite one on the album, Hearts Alive. Now whereas most of the tracks on this album leading up to Hearts Alive, which is the second to last track, are relatively on the short side, being under 4 minutes long, this track is over 13 minutes long. Just taking up a lot of space on the entire runtime of this album, but with good reason in my opinion, because it is a great song. It starts off with this um, slower kind of build up that goes on for around two minutes. I just think it's really mysterious and kind of creepy sounding even. And then around a little after two minute mark, there's this heavy sludgy riff that just kind of comes in and reminds you that you're listening to Mastodon. It's just really cool sounding and it kind of adds that urgent feel back into it. I love how this song kind of plays with both those kind of guitar concepts I was talking about earlier, the more urgent sounding guitars and then the more mysterious sounding. It kind of has both in it, which I think is really cool. And this track also has some clean vocals thrown in there and some more aggressive vocals thrown in there. But then again, with the 13 minute runtime, of course it has a lot of time to do all this. I just love how on the track they play off these different concepts. And towards the end they have this cool guitar part, which I think is just a nice way to close out the track. And then the final track on this album is an instrumental called Joseph Merrick, which is just a really cool, kind of mysterious sounding, kind of even creepy track. Definitely plays more to that mysterious guitar sound I was talking about before. And I think it's just a really kind of cool way to close out this album. Whereas last of this album has been aggressive and really paranoid and urgent sounding. This track is just kind of a breather, I guess you could say. Just listening to this track at the end of the album, it's kind of like this really cool, creepy closer to it. That I just really kind of like. I don't really like instrumental tracks a lot of the times because I feel like they're just filler that are thrown in by a band to take up a track space because they were too lazy to come up with lyrics or something. But with tracks like this, it's very apparent that these are meant to be instrumental tracks that are just great instrumental tracks and stand on their own without lyrics. And you may wonder, who exactly is Joseph Merrick? Uh, well, I did some research into this to see if it has anything to do with uh, Moby Dick itself, and it doesn't. Apparently, 
he was this guy who, like over a hundred years ago, he had some deformity or something, and they called him the Elephant Man, which is the closing track on Mastodon's last album, Remission, and which was also an instrumental, which kind of connects these two albums, I guess you could say. And he had this just this kind of deformity where his skin was kind of and messed up, like for lack of a better word, I don't even know exactly what to describe it as because I'm not an expert in medical stuff. And then even what I was reading, not everyone is exactly sure because he lived such a long time ago that you know there's not a lot to really go off of, just some old pictures. But yeah, essentially that guy was, I guess you could say, kind of treated like an outsider in that time period, I would assume. People weren't exactly understanding back then. And for some reason, Mastodon seemed to have a uh, penchant for him, I guess you could say, with having two tracks kind of named after him. This one, of course, going with his actual name, the one on the previous album going off of his stage name, I guess you could say, The Elephant Man. I, just, I really don't know what it has to do with the whole concept of Leviathan and Moby Dick, and I don't really know what Elephant Man has to do with anything on Remission, especially given that they're instrumental tracks, they really don't have any lyrics to go off of, but maybe they just thought he was kind of cool. I mean, I think it's kind of cool. Overall, I can easily understand why Leviathan is considered by many to be Mastodon's best work. It's my second favorite of theirs, but easily I can understand why this is a classic in the metal world. Sludge metal, just pretty much all music is considered a classic by many. Every riff on this album is memorable in their own kind of way. I don't even want to know how many times I've just gotten these riffs stuck in my head in just the most like unexpected times. And of course, the lyrics kind of going about with the whole Moby Dick concept, I just think it's really interesting how they managed to turn a book into an album. You know, lots of people like to talk about, is the movie better than the book? But lots of times they don't ask, is the album better than the book? Probably because lots of bands don't make albums based on books, but I mean, when talking about Moby Dick, make sure you bring up Leviathan into the conversation. Is Leviathan better than the book Moby Dick? Who really cares? They're two separate things. All I know is that Leviathan is great. I can also greatly appreciate the top-notch musicianship that's kind of shown on this album. The guest features are great. They're just the perfect kind of guest feature where they really don't take over the track. They just kind of add their own special, I guess you could say, sprinkle of their own personal magic into the track. I know that was kind of a dumb metaphor there, but I guess it kind of works. And most importantly, I really appreciate how this album kind of keeps a consistent sound to it. And as I was talking about before, it's not exactly the kind of sound where it's like every track sounds the same and it's boring because of that. It's more like all these tracks were clearly made at, at the same time with a similar uh, mindset, a sim similar end goal in terms of the sound. And I think it makes the album really consistent for that reason. They don't necessarily have to have the tracks flow into each other to make it all sound like it belongs together. And overall, I think that's all I really have to say about this album. Uh, if you enjoyed this review, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. As I said before, we're at this entire month I'm having reviews for all of Mastodon the albums coming out, and I already have one out for remission, so make sure to check that out if you enjoyed this review. Of course, it's in the similar vein to this review. Uh, yeah, so I'd like really appreciate if you subscribe so that you don't miss out on those Mastodon reviews that you're obviously going to want to see. Uh, yeah, and if you have anything that you want to share about your own opinions on this album, leave it down in the comment section below. I greatly want to see it. I will, of course, love hearing different th people's perspectives on albums that I like. And overall, yeah, this is a great album. Stay golden.